This morning is the Order of Matins on page 219, and our service begins with the first hymn. Open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. With my voice, I cry out to the Lord. With my voice, I plead for mercy to the Lord. When my spirit faints within me, you know my way. In the path where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. I cry to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. Congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 42. For a long time I have held my peace. I have kept still and restrained myself. Now I will cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant. I will lay waste mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn the rivers into islands and dry up the pools. And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know in paths that they have not known, and I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them, for they are turned back and utterly put to shame, who trust in carved idols, who say to metal images, you are our gods. Hear you deaf, and look you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger whom I send? Who is blind as my dedicated one, or blind as a servant of the Lord? He sees many things, but does not observe them. His ears are open, but he does not hear. The Lord was pleased for his righteousness sake to magnify this law and make it glorious. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 5. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of things that they do in secret. But when anything ex is exposed to the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, <clears throat> the ninth chapter. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, it was not this man that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of God who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. 
As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back, seeing. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, He put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they again said to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and you would teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out and found him, and he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into the world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is put away. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. be seated. The service continues with the sermon hymn.
mercy and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation is our gospel lesson from John chapter 9. How many of you have ever taken a tour of a cave? Raise your hands. Yeah, now you know exactly what happens when you take a tour of a cave, right? What do they do when you're in the depths of the cave? They turn out all the lights, don't they? And that's your favorite part of the trip to the cave because you can't even see your hand in front of your face. It's absolutely pitch dark. You can see absolutely nothing. That was the circumstance of this man who was born blind. Was he blind? Yes. The text of Holy Scripture says that he was blind from birth. <clears throat> he had never seen a sunrise. He had never seen green grass. <clears throat> he had never seen the face of his parents or even a reflection of his own face in water. He had lived in the black darkness of absolute blindness all of his life. For him to go anywhere, he needed to be led by those who had sight. <clears throat> and in that day and age, individuals who were handicapped like him with blindness, well, what was their life's occupation? Well, they would sit at the entrance to the temple and beg for alms or offerings gifts of charity for those who were handicapped. This was the life of the blind man until he met Jesus. Was this man spiritually blind? Well, yes, he was. Because the text of Holy Scripture says he did not even know who the Son of Man was, much less that that person was Jesus. When this man received his sight, this was a great blessing to him. But the Pharisees did not really like this because, well, Jesus had healed this man of his blindness on the Sabbath day. And the way he healed this man was Jesus spit in the ground, made mud out of the dirt, put the mud on his eyes, and had him go and wash in the pool of Siloam. All such things were forbidden by the Jewish laws that had been invented by the Pharisees. And so when they asked this man about how he had received his sight, he described Jesus as a prophet. And when they asked him again and again how he received his sight, he said, look, this man made mud. He put the mud on my eyes. I washed in the pool of Siloam. I who was blind, I now see. And when they asked about Jesus, he said, well, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. But what I do know is that I was blind, but now I see. And having described Jesus as a prophet, the, the scribes and the Pharisees said, well, this man is obviously a sinner because he healed on the Sabbath day. He performed all these works on the Sabbath day. To which this blind man said, whether he is a, a sinner or not, I don't know. But I know now that I see. Later, Jesus again comes into contact with this man. And Jesus asked this man, do you believe in the Son of Man, the Messiah? To which the formerly blind man said, Lord, I do not know him. Who is he? that I may believe. And Jesus says, I who am speaking to you am he. And the man instantly confessed his faith. Lord, I believe. So this man who had been born physically and spiritually blind, now having come into contact with Jesus, is able to see both with his physical eyes and with the eyes of faith that Jesus is his savior from sin. What of the Pharisees? Well, the Pharisees obviously could see. 
They could see, yes, the sunrise. They could see green grass. They could see the faces of other people. The Pharisees could see the oppression caused by the Romans as they occupied Palestine. They could see the unrest caused by rebellious groups like the Zealots who attempted to overthrow the Roman rule. They could see people coming to the synagogues to worship and to the temple in Jerusalem to worship. They could see the sacrifices being performed. They could read the texts of Holy Scripture that talked about the work of the coming Messiah. For those Old Testament texts were very clear about the, what the Messiah would be doing when he came. And they had seen Jesus, the miracles that he'd performed, not only giving sight to this blind man, but healing the lame who then were able to walk, the deaf who were able to hear, the mute who were able to speak, and yes, even raising people who had died from death to life. The Pharisees had seen all of this. But what they could not see was that Jesus was the fulfillment of those prophecies in Holy Scripture. Though they had physical sight, sadly they were spiritually blind and unable to see. They could not see that Jesus was the Messiah prophesied about in the Old Testament Scriptures. Hear, you deaf, and look, you blind, that you may see. Or the words of Isaiah about the coming Messiah, who when he would come, then the eyes of the blind would be opened, the ears of the deaf would be unstopped, the lame should leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb would speak. Yes, they had read those prophecies. They had seen what Jesus had done. But sadly, they did not believe. It was like they were in a dark cave with no light and could see absolutely nothing spiritually that Jesus was performing. What about us? Are we able to see? Well, probably none of us here this morning are physically blind. Yes, we are able to see. We are able to see the sunrise. We are able to see green grass or, as the current point is, lots of snow. And perhaps more lots of snow before the season ends. We can see all manner of things in the world around us. We can see the war in the Ukraine. We can see the deaths of people in by train wreck in Greece. We have these things come into our homes via the media, television, and other aspects of modern media. We can see poverty, sickness, illness, sorrows, griefs. We can also see wonderful joys that God provides for us in our everyday life. Yes, we are able to see physically. But the truth be known, we were born with spiritual blindness. And until we were brought to faith in Jesus Christ, we too were like those scribes and Pharisees groping in the spiritual darkness of sin and unbelief. But thanks be to God, the work of the Holy Spirit and the sacrament of holy baptism and through the continued preaching and teaching of the Word and the administration of the Lord's Supper, our spiritual sight has been given to us and we are able to see the work of our Savior, Jesus Christ. But sadly, like the disciples, we do not see perfectly. When Jesus asked the question about this blind man to the disciples, and he pointed them out, the disciples said, Lord, who sinned? Meaning, who did some horrible, terrible sin that this man was born blind? This was the purpose of their question. Because in their thinking, if something really bad happened to someone, like they were born blind, then someone had to do some really terrible, horrible, horrible sin. And Jesus corrects them and says, no, 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 no. 
they basically didn't understand that because we live in a broken and sinful world such tragedies will happen people will be born with handicaps and difficulties because this is not a perfect place but Jesus points out very clearly that this man's blindness offered a chance an opportunity to show the power and the glory of God in Jesus the Savior and this is exactly what Jesus did Jesus noted the cause was not some terrible horrible sin that had been committed by the parents or by him but now God had an opportunity to show his grace his love his mercy to sinful human beings and to remind all of us of God's great care for the world and all the sinful human beings in the world yeah there is a difference here that difference has to do with what Christ is doing for sinners like us and having been brought to faith in Christ we need God's grace and forgiveness this is why we have the confession of sins why we live in daily contrition and repentance and why Luther in the explanation of the catechism in part four noted that we live in daily contrition and repentance so that we might drown the old Adam with all sins and evil lusts and rise daily as new creatures in Christ with our spiritual sight improved cleansed of the sin the darkness of the past Paul encourages this when he writes once we were darkness but now we are light in the Lord the light of Christ's righteousness has enlightened us and enabled us to see spiritually in addition to being able to see physically our God does not want us to walk in the works of darkness rather our God says that we should walk in all goodness righteousness and truth by the power of the Holy Spirit we are able to say yes Lord I believe that you are the Son of Man the Messiah the Savior of the world God's Son clothed in human flesh along with the text of Holy Scripture we are able to say I see that Jesus is God's prophet a righteous man sent from God who perfectly did the Heavenly Father's will that he is God's Son the light of the world the one who has given us spiritual sight that we might walk in the pathways of righteousness by faith so that we can say yes I was spiritually blind but now I see I see who Christ truly is and it is important for us not only to see who Christ truly is but to see what Christ did for us for you see Christ saw our sinful spiritually blind condition and he knew that there was nothing we could do to change that spiritually blind condition just as sitting in that dark cave with the lights off until the people running the tour of the cave turn the lights back on we are totally powerless because we don't know where the switch is much less how we might find it so for us being spiritually blind we are unable to change our own spiritually blind condition Christ had to come fulfilling the law of God in our place suffering dying and rising again that we might have spiritual sight that our blindness would be removed that we would be enabled to be the sons and daughters of God by faith in Christ our Savior Jesus saw his task from the beginning for he came not simply to perform miracles like healing the blind the deaf the mute the lame not only to raise people from death to life but Jesus came primarily to pay for our sins on the cross of Calvary that is the emphasis during the Lenten season as we see Jesus coming in love dying suffering why because of our sin because of our spiritual darkness 
because of the times when we are spiritually blind even though he has given us spiritual sight and as the Holy Spirit moves us to live in contrition and repentance <clears throat> we again grasp in faith with the eyes of faith the wondrous work of Christ our Savior yes thankfully Christ came he came to remove the spiritual blindness that we have to give us spiritual sight to enable us to live in daily contrition and repentance to enable us to see all that he has done to redeem sinners like us from our sins to enable us to have spiritual sight to walk in the pathways of righteousness washed in the flood waters of our baptism so that having our feet maintained by the grace of God in Jesus Christ in the pathways of righteousness we might at the end of our days say I was blind but now I see now I see my Lord's face and I see the fullness of his grace and by the power of his grace I shall see the fullness of his glory in the mansions of heaven where I shall be face to face with Christ seeing with the eyes of faith and the physical eyes that God has given me the full glory of heaven for all eternity Amen and now may that peace which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in true faith in Jesus Christ unto life everlasting Amen we now will accept the offering We rise and our service continues with hymn 941. We praise you and acknowledge you, O oh God.
pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Great Physician, open our eyes by your blessed gospel and hide us in your shelter in the day of trouble. Provide a home in your church for those cast out by this world and unite them with us in the pure confession of your holy name. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, your Son abides amongst his saints in the temple of his church. Shelter all those who seek refuge under the cover of his tent and raise up pastors in every age to serve them in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Father, through holy baptism you have brought us into the light of Christ. Guide us always in your ways and teach us to know your will so that we as the baptized children of God would do what is good and right and true. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, those who wait for your salvation have the promise that you will not forsake them. Lead those who wander in spiritual darkness and who wander in dark places and rough places that you would help them to find the way of righteousness, giving them spiritual sight so that they would not be put to shame. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, you have promised that what we suffer does not condemn us, but instead displays your glory. Sustain all those who are afflicted in body or soul, that they would take heart, trust you for healing, and find you even in the midst of their trials. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, thank you for freeing us from our spiritual blindness and enabling us to see you as our Savior from sin. Into your hands, O Lord, Heavenly Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, our Lord. Amen. We pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant us this day that we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all. Amen.